Relations between the Republic of Ireland and Britain have achieved a closeness and warmth that once seemed unachievable. The words of the Irish President Michael Higgins during his country's first official state visit to the UK. This has been a day of firsts for Anglo-Irish relations. He was also received at Windsor Castle by the Queen. The visit is aimed at stressing the two countries' shared histories. But as Andy Davies reports, not everyone is prepared to wipe the slate clean on the violence of the past. When it's taken your neighbours this long to invite you round for tea, there's always a risk they might overcompensate in the strength of the welcome. Marching bands, horse-drawn carriages and royal salutes. Our soul cavalry, royal salute! The full panoply of state ceremony marshalled this morning to welcome Michael D. Higgins, the ninth president of Ireland and notably the first to be afforded a state visit like this. Never before has an Irish president been so fated by the British state nor offered such a platform by its parliament. I stand here at a time when the relationship between our two islands has, as I have said, achieved a closeness and warmth that once seemed unachievable. The ties between us are now strong and resolute. It was an eloquent, reflective speech from the president, who earlier stood in the grounds of Windsor Castle, watching a British military band play the Irish national anthem. The Soldier's Song, once a chorus of rebellion sung in British internment camps. In the land of the Redcoats, he brought a new one for the wolfhound mascot of the Irish Guards. A neat gesture in what the President would later call a new era of friendship. What we now enjoy between Ireland and Britain is a friendly cooperative partnership based on mutual respect, reciprocal benefit and deep and indelible personal links that bind us together in cultural and social terms. Falling slowly as that moment. The Irish musicians Lisa Hannigan and Glenn Hansard will be performing for the President at the Albert Hall this week and celebrating the significance of this state visit. It just feels very powerful for Michael D to be coming and making a, a proper state visit and, and, it's, and it, again it's a mark of the man that he stands up and, and makes that call and I think it's very courageous and you know the world rewards the courageous and I'll stand right by the man's shoulder and represent him every second of the way as, as, as I can. In an echo of the Queen's hugely symbolic visit to the Garden of Remembrance in Dublin three years ago, the Irish President laid a wreath today in Westminster Abbey at the tomb of the unknown warrior, killed at a time when Ireland was under British rule. And then he stopped to look at a memorial to the Queen's cousin, Lord Louis Mountbatten, killed by an IRA bomb. Our two countries can take immense pride in the progress of the cause of peace in Northern Ireland. But of course, there is still a road to be travelled, the road of a lasting and creative reconciliation. And our two governments have a shared responsibility to encourage and support those who need to complete the journey of making peace permanent and constructive, enduring. On a day of landmark moments, it still wasn't difficult to see where the old divisions remain. Among the audience were Sinn Féin MPs who still refused to take up their seats in the House of Commons chamber and in so doing, swear an oath of allegiance to the Queen. And yet, how interesting and how significant that tonight, one of those former abstentionist MPs, Martin McGuinness, will walk into Windsor Castle for a state banquet. A former IRA commander, a house guest of a British monarch. That is symbolic. But the presence of Martin McGuinness, now Northern Ireland's Deputy First Minister, at such a banquet remains hugely controversial for some. And despite today's uplifting mood music, the manifold wounds of the past still linger heavily over the ongoing peace process. In the last 24 hours, another two arrests were made concerning past paramilitary murders, one connected to the OMA bombing. In the words of the Irish president, there is still a road to be traveled. Andy Davies.